Really? Well, when I was at school, um, when I was very young, I went to Hebrew classes, but um, I'd forgotten it all. all <laughs> I'd forgotten it. it all. Yeah, my brother speaks Hebrew very well because he <laughs> for four years, but I'd forgotten it all. But I think if I stayed here for maybe two or three months, it's quite easy. This is your first visit to Israel? No, I've been here plenty of times. Really? About, yeah, I'd say six times, maybe. ג'ון מוס בישראל, הוא היה כאן בחודש שעבר, ימים אחדים, המתופף היהודי של להקת מועדון תרבות, קלצ'ר קלאב, והוא יחזור עם כל הלהקה בקיץ, שוב להופיע בפארק הירקון בתל אביב. אנחנו הצלחנו להשיג ראיון איתו באולפן התל אביבי שלנו, ואנחנו נצפה בחלקים מן הראיון הזה עם ג'ון מוס, אבל תחילה בואו ניזכר בצלילים אחדים מלהיטה הראשון של להקת מועדון תרבות, Do you really want to hurt me? האם את באמת רוצה להכאיב לי? שימו לב למילים על גב, על החולצה, לא על גבה. Actually, culture club is a kind of uh, all religion, all race. That's right. Well, that, that was <coughs> originally the meaning of the name, you see, because um, George is Catholic, and Roy, the guitarist, is a Christian, white English Christian boy. Um, the bass player, Mike, is black, from Jamaica, and I'm Jewish, you see. Also, um, George is from South London, I'm from North London, The guitarist is from East, and uh, Mikey, the bass player, is from West London. So really, we're completely different. And uh, it's quite a coincidence. And so this is how Culture Club came around. It started actually with you and Boy George getting together. Well, it actually started with Mikey. Mm. See, Boy George had been with um, Bow Wow Wow. Yes. You know, Call Me Annabella, that, that group. And um, he didn't get on with Malcolm McLaren at all, so he left. And Mikey saw his picture in the paper, and he said, oh, it looks very interesting. So he met George in a club one night and said, do you want to start a group? You see, and George said, yeah, okay, then why not? But they didn't have any experience, and um, Mikey was a bit lazy, you know. He didn't want to do much. So they decided to look for a drummer. And it's very strange, because when I first met George, there were like no songs, nothing, just a lot of talent, you know. Like Mikey and George were very keen, but they didn't know what to do. And George used to write poetry. I, you know, he used to write loads of poetry. And I used to look at it and say, like, you need a verse and a chorus. And slowly, um, what I did was, like, organise him. Because George had the talent and he had the voice. But he's so creative, he was going all over the place, everywhere, everywhere. And he needed someone to take him and push him in the direction. You were the most experienced, really, among the members of the group. Yeah, seven years of failure. <laughs> the best experience. But in good company, though. Very good. Yeah, I was with The Clash. But I left them because they were... Um, They had very strong political views, mm. which I didn't agree with. But Mick Jones in The Clash is Jewish, right? It's very strange, yeah. In spite of his views. Yeah, that's why they never used the swastika, you know? Mm. You know, uh, the sex pistols used the swastika. Oh, yes. The one thing I liked about The Clash, I said, listen, if I, you know, w play with you, there's no way I'm going to wear this, you know, no way. And they said, no, he's Jewish, you know? I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I had to leave The Clash because I, I, if someone has a political view, it's okay if they believe in it. But they didn't believe in it, you know, they went on to become rich and they didn't give their money away. And, so what know. was it, just a kind of a commercial pose? No, I think actually they were sort of naive, even though they weren't very young. They actually believed in very socialist ideas and they thought if they got successful they'd give their money away. But I don't think they really believed they would ever get successful, right? There's a joke in Russia where they say to a guy, he said, if you had two houses would you give one to the state, <laughs> right? And the guy says, yes. He says, good. He said, if you had two cars, would you give one to the state? He goes, of course, yes. He said, if you had two cows? He said, no. <laughs> right? Because he has two cows, you see. And it's the same with, a, same with the clash. So anyway, so I left them. And then I went to the damned. Yes. And then uh, the damned split up. I had an accident, car crash, you know. And so I had to leave. And they split up. These know. cars that you have on your team? Some of these. This is different. <laughs> I'm always having accidents, you know. When I was younger, I was very, uh, really crazy. So I quietened down a little bit. I was always having accidents, you know. You got cuts everywhere. <laughs> um, anyway, the dam split up because everybody was drinking and it was too many everything. The bad, bad news, right? Mm. So then I went to Stiff Records, and uh, my group, The Edge, became like a Motown band for Stiff. But they bring in like Jonah Louie, Kirsty McCall, Jane Eyre, and we'd be the group. So we'd be sitting in the studio. We wait. We look at the song, write some music play it, thank you very much, and go. Then that fell apart. And then um, Adam, from Adam the Ants, came to me and he said, I'd like you to play with me and show me how to do two drums together. 
and I worked with him on two singles, but um, he was too, too demanding. You know, he wanted all the ideas, but he wouldn't let you. What, express yourself? Well, yeah, you know, he wanted to be very much the boss. You mm. see, the thing about George is that he knows I need him and he needs me, and we respect that with each other, so it works. But with Adam, it was a bit like him and, you know, you do what you're told. A very nice guy, but not for me. I was actually wondering who writes the songs for mm. Culture Club, because you always get, cre all of you get the credit for it, That's but how right, does yeah. it usually work out? Well, um, George writes all the lyrics. He, he won't sing anybody else's lyrics, you know, George, he's very personal, his lyrics, and he has to sing them, otherwise he can't express them properly, you know, artist. <laughs> so what happens is George will write the lyrics and have a melody. He doesn't play piano, he just like out of thin air, that's why he Makes so, up a tune. Yeah, he's incredible, very talented, very good with words, typical Irishman, you know, very good with words. And then he'll bring it in, we all go in the studio like this, which is drums, guitar, piano, bass, and um, Roy, who's mm -hmm. like very musical, very good piano player. If George sings like, kama, 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 he'll go, do, 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 Right, so he has the notes, then he plays the chords, mm -hmm. and then me and Mikey supply like a beat. You know, it's very, the beat is the most important thing, not just because I'm a drummer, right? <laughs> but the beat and the melody is important because the, the drum beat makes the song happen. I mean, when, um, when George wrote Karma Chameleon, we, we were singing harmonies, and the guitarist Roy, you know, and the pianist, he didn't like it at all. He said, I don't like it, I don't know what to do with it, I don't like this song. So I said, after like a month, I said, look, this is really stupid, it's a great song. Try it like a rockabilly, like Elvis Presley, like boom, 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 boom. And everybody's going, nah, shut up, John, it's stupid, you know. So I tried it, and it worked. Culture Club is actually going through um, a slow period right now. Yeah. I mean, your last LP, the third album, mm. didn't do as well as the previous two. Mm. Um, does it scare you at all? No, with me, it's funny. It might sound terrible, but I was quite pleased in a way, because when you're very, very successful, fairly quickly, over two or three years, you begin to lose the impetus. You begin to lose the desire. And a little bit of you know, non-success is good for you, because it makes you reevaluate. And also it makes you realise that maybe you're getting a little bit lazy and a little bit conceited. So a lot of bands have it, you know, The Police, their third album was like, didn't do so well. People were saying, oh, you know, they're finished and everything. Duran Duran, Seven and the Ragged T Tiger is a terrible album. You know, and they know, they know it's not a very good album. So what is it, a kind of a natural phase that every group has to go through? I think a lot of groups do go through it, yes. All groups have a sort of a barren period. That's why now we've changed producers. We're with Arif Mardin now, who does Chaka Khan and Green, Scritty Pility. Um, you can get lazy, and it's very difficult when you're in a group to know when to change. If you change too early, it's not good. And if you change too late, it's not good either. So every group goes through a period where they go down a little bit. And it's very important that you either stay together and come back up, or you split up, you know. Do you personally feel that the third album is not as good as the previous ones? No, it's not as good as Colour by Numbers or Kissing, to be clever. It's a good album, but um, we need to spend more time on the next album. You know, I, I think it's, it's not a bad album. I mean, compared to other people's albums, it's still, I still think it's fantastic. The songs are great. But I think it, we could have made it better. You know, it's very good, but it's not up to our standards. I happen to like your third album a lot, actually, mm. more than the previous two. Well, that's good. We sold seven million copies, so, you know, it's doing pretty well. And I was wondering, maybe it has, I mean, the, the fact that it's less successful has mm. less to do with the record itself mm. and more with the image of the group and well, Boy George. Yeah, George has had a lot too much exposure, you see. He's, um... He went through a stage in England where he was going out, you know, to a, a concert maybe and getting really dressed up, you know, and I said like, well, you know, you're asking for it, you're, you're making news for yourself all the time. And I don't think he really, really realised that maybe um, it could work badly for him because, you know, the press used to love George, they said, hey, he's fantastic. Then one day he got bad press and he said like, what's happened? He couldn't believe it, you know, but I knew and I, I tried to tell him, but you can't, you know, he's not a baby, you have to let people learn. Um, and people can get bored of it, you know, if you've got a very strong image. John Moss, Metofef, Mordon